Right, guys, so we're going to be building on what we learnt last week, which was, anyone know? Hands up. Yes. The Eat Well Plate. The Eat Well Plate, well done. The Eat Well Plate is the UK healthy eating guide explaining the types and proportions of foods to be eaten over several days. It is suitable for everyone over two years of age. So today we're going to be looking at the foods in more detail. How it's made, where it comes from, what makes it, and we're also going to look about the nutrition of each food group as well. The students were divided into groups and assigned one of the five different food groups. And you two, can you be milk and dairy foods please? The groups were then asked to come and collect the food and drinks which belonged to their food group. Fruit and vegetables should make up about a third of our diet. The following types of fruit and vegetables all count. Fresh, frozen, dried and canned food. The bread, rice, potatoes, pasta and other starchy foods group should also make up about a third of our diet. It is suggested that meals should be based on foods from this group, with the aim of including at least one food from this group at each meal occasion. The milk and dairy foods group includes milk, cheese, yoghurt and fromage frais. Calcium fortified soya alternatives to milk are also included in this group. Remember, this group does not include butter, eggs and cream as these fall into other food groups. This food group includes meat, poultry, fish, eggs and other non-dairy sources of protein. Did you know beans and pulses also count towards the five a day fruit and vegetable portion target? Foods in this group should be used sparingly if they are eaten every day or not eaten too often. It is essential to have a small amount of fat in the diet but remember that foods containing a lot of fat can be high in energy. Sugar adds flavour and sweetness to foods, but frequent consumption of sugar containing foods and drink in between meals is associated with increased dental decay. Should we start off with the carrot? Okay, so try and work out where it's come from, where we can buy it from. Um, you can get it from your local shop, market. Maybe grow them yourself in your own garden. You could grow them yourself in your own garden, well done. No idea how far. Should we ask her? Yeah. What's the um, place? Could we, um, we don't know how flowers made and we wanted to know, so could we have a look on your computer, please? Yeah, of course you can. Go ahead, sir. Flour is made from the flour is made from milled wheat. It takes around 350 ears of wheat to make enough flour for one 800 gram loaf of bread. Should we find out some more about starchy foods? Yeah. Do you want to try? Oh, here's a look. Potatoes are another example of a starchy food. We drink over 5 billion litres of milk in Britain each year. Different types of food are produced from milk, including cheese and yoghurt. It's a live chili. I've heard there's a dairy farm up the road. Oh yeah, um, maybe if, if Sir lets us, we can maybe um, write an email to see if we could go around for a visit soon. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Sir. So, What's up, guys? There's a dairy, do you know there's a dairy farm up the road? I do, yeah. Can we write an email to the dairy farm soon if we can go on a visit, please? Uh, you can, but I've already got people on the computer, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to draft it first. Okay. And when they've done, then you can pop on and send the email. Is that alright? Yeah. Marvelous, great idea, guys. Our group all have a thing in common. They all have protein in them. Yeah, yeah some are from animals and some are from plants. Yeah, look, that bacon and tuna must be from animals, and so seeds, lentils, and baked beans must be from plants. Should we compare how much fat is in each of these and see who's got the highest? Mine's got 9.2 per 100 grams. Mine's got 0.2. No, mine's got 34.8 grams. That means mine's the highest. That's why it's important to look at all the labels on the food product. Yeah. Should we look at all the others? After researching the different food groups, the students took some time out to visit a local dairy farm to learn more about where food comes from. I'm very pleased to see you uh, here at Coat Hill. And I understand that uh, you've been looking at uh, food products from milk. The students put on their boots and old shoes before Michael took them for a tour of the farm. Right, we're going to go into the crew yard. Inside here we've got two cows. One cow's had a calf last night. This calf is less than 24 hours old. Now it's sort of up on its feet and it's been suckling its mum. 
she has had quite a lot of calves, so she's had about eight or nine calves. And after she's calved and we start milking her, she can probably start um, producing 35 litres of milk a day. Whoa. Weaning is when they change from being having milk as the only food source, and which makes them grow, to solid food. So you can see those three calves in those orange buckets at the back there, orange and red bucket, there's dry pellets have got protein in, and they eat those, and we don't have to give them milk anymore. Why do they have the other types of mirrors? It's a legal requirement that after a calf is born, we have to put these two tags in. The two tags have uh, a set of numbers in. We need to identify these animals and they need to be identified so that when they're moved, they, um, we can keep a, a record of where they moved to. So when these calves, if I sell these calves or if I sell a cow from this farm, she has a passport that goes with her. Have you guys got passports? So you need it to travel, don't you, if you go on holiday? So if these move off the farm, they have to have their passport with them. What would you do if you have a male calf? All cows have, have a calf. We try and get them to have one calf a year. 50% bulls, 50% heifers, male, female. And the females, we would then, these ones here in this pen, will be reared and they will calve and come into the herd in two years' time. The male calves are reared for beef. Right. So if you'd like to follow me down here, the red ones, they're red poles. The black and white ones are Frisians. Okay, so they're both dairy breeds, but they're obviously of different colours. Normally, cows start have their first calf when they're two years old, and they need to have a calf every year to produce milk. How old are cows live for? Uh, my cows will stay here as so long as they're healthy. They get in calf every year, have a calf. Um, and I'd say our oldest one is 14 years old, which is quite old for a cow. Some beef cattle, they can live to 18 or 19, which is really quite remarkable. But for dairy cows, the average is probably about um, eight or nine years old. How are the cows cared for? What we try and do is to feed them correctly. We try and give them a good environment to live in. In the winter time, we do bring them inside because obviously the ground is too wet and the grass doesn't grow. If a cow does get poorly, then we get the vet in. Okay. But sometimes we do get a disease in the, in the udder called mastitis. But if a cow gets a mastitis, that's caused by bad bacteria. And if that happens, then we treat the cow ourselves. We treat it with antibiotics. On the farm, there are certain areas which are specific for wildlife. Sections of tall grass are maintained to create a habitat for wild birds, such as partridges, to nest. The hedgerows are also trimmed by Michael on a rotational basis to encourage these to flower. And then when they're flowered, they produce more fruit. And what will flowers and fruit do? Feed, yeah, well, feed, feed, feed birds, won't they? And insects, because actually we have got some insects. Honeybees, honey yeah, yeah. So we've got honeybees as well. We've got this lovely clover, and you can see it's flowering. So the bees are flying from the hive, and then they're getting the nectar from, from the clover that's growing on the farm, okay? So we're not just here to creating an environment for just for, for the cows, but there's also lots of benefits for, for wildlife. Is this where the cows sleep? It is. Uh, they're not sleeping here at the moment because the cows are outside It's summertime. But however, in wintertime, they have to come in here and this is uh, where they sleep and live for 24 hours a day. So what we've got here are individual partitions so cows can access <coughs> these cow beds um, and they choose which ones they want to go into. The base is concrete and on top of that is a rubber mattress, okay, so it's quite soft. And on top of that we've spread sawdust. Now the sawdust is just a little bit like talcum powder, so when they get up and down it slides easily, but also it keeps the udder dry. The cows actually will stand in, they'll push the head forward and lie down, so their back end is here, and then they dung in this dung channel, okay. So that's all kept separate from where they lie. So we actually take a tractor and a scraper and these passageways are scraped out twice a day. The environment that we're in now as well is the other key thing. We're trying to con control bacteria basically, so we don't want big build-up of bacteria. Bacteria really like moist conditions, they like humid conditions, so our shed is, is quite big, tall, high. We've got gaps in the uh, wood around the edge that allows fresh air to come in. The hot air from the cows rises up and they go out through the holes in the roof. Okay. So we've got a circulation of nice clean air. Keeps it drier, keeps it fresher, stops the bacteria building up. Are the cows free to move around when they're in here? They are, yeah. So they choose where to go in the cubicles to lie down. So then they'll get up 
they'll walk out through that doorway there to the feed face, and that's where their food is. And that's available to them 24 hours a day. When they've had enough feed there, walk past the water trough there, and they're having a drink of water, look, and they're splashing and having good fun in it, and then they come back and lie down again. Sometimes they do have a little play. We have uh, some special cow brushes, so it gets all the dust and the, and, the, and the muck out of their hair as well. So we might just see them come up and do that a bit now. Look, let's come for a quick brush look. Does each cow have its own bed? So in here we've got 84 separate cow beds. Uh, we've actually got 70 cows in the herd. So when they're all in here, they've all got their own individual bed. And so they, get, they, they can choose as well. How much milk does a cow produce? Cows at the moment are averaging 22 litres a day. Um, but individually they can range from eight, nine litres up to 35 litres. What other types of technology do you use on the farm? The cows all have blue ear tags in and we can go on the computer and we can put into that computer so many kilos of feed and then when the cow goes in it triggers off the machine to, to give it some food and it eats it. We milk record the cows once a month so from that we get the yield per cow and we get the fat and the protein of the individual cows. That is all processed um, by a computer and we can access that on, online and obviously the internet <laughs> because that's how we advertise our, our cheese uh, but a lot of information as well that we get sort of through the internet on farming, new, uh, new processes in farming, what's going on. Um, the interesting thing is you'll see our cows being milked which is quite a traditional way of milking cows. The more up-to-date method is actually to have robots milking cows. Um, what do cows actually do all day? Most of the time they are producing milk. They eat a lot of food, okay, so they're eating sort of 60, 50, 60 kilos of food a day, drink a lot of water. It all needs a lot of digestion. It's quite slow, that digestion process. So when the cows have eaten, well then they'll, they're full. They need to go and lie down. And they'll lie down for up to 14 hours a day. Okay, not all at one period, they'll get up and, uh, but overall in 24 hours they'll lie down for about 14 hours. In that time they're digesting the food that they've eaten. Okay, so for the rest of the time they're eating a bit more food um, and then sometimes they do have a, a little play time so they might just go on that cow brush and just sort of get a bit smart. And what do cows eat in the winter? So this is the ration, it's a red clover that's gone into that machine, it's been chopped up into small pieces. We've added some brewer's grains and we've added some uh, sugar beet pulp and some starch, it's, which is a, a bakery byproduct, so bread, cakes, biscuits, things like that. Michael explains the milking process with the help of two student volunteers. First of all, they've had to walk through quite muddy gateways. What I'm doing is I'm getting the, the soil off. Okay, see she's got quite a lot of soil on the heat. We've got to get it all off because it's quite abrasive. It makes the teeth sore. Drying off again. And then we're going to sterilise the teeth and the other with iodine spray. So I'm going to go back down and I'm spraying with iodine. Okay? Well done. So I've got to just take some of the four milk up onto the floor. And what I'm looking for are clots. Okay. And I'm going to just wipe these teeth like you dry your hands. Okay. Dry the teeth. The teeth are all clean. Um, we sterilise them with iodine. The others fairly clean. We're going to put the clusters on now, which are these machines here. We're starting it, and we get vacuum. So that's how the clusters are held on. come through there, so you'll see it travelling down into the jar at the end there. So, do you want to come and put this one on? Yep. Well, that's how you get it. Put one there, look. Milking is not a painful or uncomfortable process for the cows. It is very similar to having a calf suckle milk from the cow. Well done. That's it. Excellent. Right, so we've got eight cows milking at once. We don't have to do anything else now. There's this much milk from the cows. 
the vacuum that's holding the clusters on. And the clusters are connected to this cord, okay? Can you see up here all the milk going through that little pot? When there's no milk going through there, that sends a signal to the machine and it will cut the vacuum so the clusters fall off the udder and then the cord brings the cluster away from the cow. We need to get the cows clean. We need to check the quarters for, for mastitis, which we strip the full milk out. And if there is mastitis, there'll be white clots in the milk. We attach the clusters. The machine then takes over. The vacuum takes the milk away from the cow to the jar at the end. And then when the milk cows are finished milking, the machine takes the cluster away. Then the final thing that we have to do is spray the cows with this iodine again, but it's also got lanolin in. Now that lanolin is a bit like hand cream, so it keeps the teeth nice and soft. And then when they're all off the milk, we open the gate at the front and then they'll go out. The teeth finished. That's it. Cows at the front there with the yellow. That's it. This one, yeah. So just go up. How many times do you milk a cow daily? We milk the cows twice a day, 6 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 365 days of the year. How many cows do you milk, like all of them or since? At the moment we're milking 50 cows and we saw two cows there in the crew yard this morning, didn't we? One had given birth, the other one is going to give birth in about a week's time. Um, so when they're given birth, then they'll come into the milking herd. So gradually we'll, um, we've got about 30, no, 20 cows to calve in the next two months. So gradually we'll go up to milking 70 cows. After milking, the cows leave the parlour. So the milk from that collection jar there uh, is pumped into a refrigerated tank. So it's cooled from 20 degrees centigrade down to four. That tank will hold four milkings and it's collected by lorry. So they lorry come on alternate days. And because it's been refrigerated, the lorry is uh, an insulated tank and it goes around lots of farms and till it's full. Can you tell me more about what's happened here? The milk that we've just got from the cows is pumped from that collecting jar. It's come all the way down the pipework and it's into this big tank here. And when it's in here, it's coming in, and that tells us the temperature. 19.1, yeah. We have to get it down to four degrees as quickly as we can. That means that the bacteria that are in, naturally in the cow's milk um, don't start to grow. So do you want to have a look in and see if there's any milk in there? Is there any milk in? Yeah. The students had a great day visiting the farm and were grateful to Michael for explaining more about dairy farming. Before the students left the farm, they had a few questions for Michael. Is farming good for the economy? Uh, it certainly is. It's also good for everybody that's living, isn't it? Because if we didn't have farmers, we wouldn't have any food to eat, would we? Okay. <laughs> but yes, it is good for Lincolnshire, where we live. Um, it is the biggest farming county in the country. It generates 20% of the food produced in this country. So very, very important. Uh, it generates jobs and we're now in a farming environment which is using a lot of high tech, very important, certainly for Lincolnshire, but it is throughout the country. Your milk good quality? It is, yes. Um, because I milk the cows, I have control of um, the management of the cows and it's very important for our cheese, but also we're selling milk to Dairy Crest. Selling milk to Dairy Crest, we need to have a certain standard, so we are farm assured and we are inspected every year by external auditors and they come and see what we're doing on our farm and they check on the welfare and they look at my vet records and all that sort of thing. So if you pass that then I can sell milk to Dairy Crest and all dairy farmers have to have this assurance otherwise you can't sell, sell the milk. And then over all that there is this branding, the Red Tractor logo brand which essentially says it's a good standard of food and it's produced in this country. The students return to their school to continue investigating the food groups from the Eat Well plate. Students conducted sensory evaluation tests on different foods from the fruit and vegetable group. Delicious bread rolls were made by the students using different types of flour. A slideshow with highlights from the dairy farm visit was presented to the class. Students held a cooking demonstration with foods from the meat, fish, eggs, beans and other non-dairy sources of protein groups.
Students weighed out the amount of sugar in different foods from the food and drinks high in fat and or sugar groups.